An Australian young man decides to go on an adventurous walk across Western Australia. Little does he know that his life is going to change for the better. Jake is taking his girlfriend, Jasmine, on a surprise diving trip. He has her blindfolded in the passenger seat as he drives. She is impatient and wants him to let her take off the blindfold. He says the surprise is worth the wait. She doesn't look thrilled at all when he stops the car, takes off her blindfold and shows her a dive boat. She always liked dolphins. They get into scuba diving suits and dive in to play around with dolphins. The bigger surprise for Jasmine is yet to come. Jake takes out a ring and proposes to her then and there. To Jake's amazement, she says no. She was meaning to break up with him today. Jake forces the ring up on her finger and keeps on making his romantic proposal speech. She keeps saying no. She wants someone more adventurous and fun. She finds Jake bland. Jake goes to his flat, dispirited and feeling rejected. His flatmate, Cameron, is working out like always. On learning that Jasmine dumped Jake when he proposed to her, he mocks Jake and berates him for not asking for Cameron's advice before going for it. Jake tells him that he has even let her have the ring in a hope that it may rekindle love in her. Jake is in tears. Cameron looks at the hopeless romantic his flatmate is and goes about his lifting. The next morning Jake wakes up to an empty can of coke and a leftover slice of pizza. He must have had a hard time falling asleep. He extends his hand to shut off the alarm clock and knocks over an empty beer bottle. He groans. His eyes fall on a photo frame on his side table, a photo of him and Jasmine. He brings it close to his heart for a moment and the next moment he thrusts it away. It falls on his computer desk and everything falls down. Hell has broken loose in his love life and in his room. But soon his work life will bear the brunt too. He goes to his work which is construction. He is a roof carpenter. Gary, the contractor and Jasmine's father, tells him that he can't work here anymore. It is because Jasmine doesn't want her ex-boyfriend working with her dad. Jake is in utter disbelief. He asks Gary to review his decision. Gary lays him off anyway. Dumped and fired, Jake goes to his flat. Cameron is in shorts only, basking in the sun. Jake asks him to get dressed. Cameron reminds him about the house belonging to Cameron. Jake says it is his parents actually. Cameron says Jasmine is a vile woman and Jake must be grateful that she is gone. Jake snaps at him for using bad names for Jasmine. To him, she is a charming and nice girl who will be his, one day. Cameron gives up and sits to watch TV with Jake. There is a show about a young man who has driven across Australia to raise money for a charity. He is famous now and every other girl is his fan. Cameron thinks Jake should do the same and get as many girls as he wants and forget his ex-girlfriend. Jake doesn't want to do such eccentric things. Cameron calls him boring. Jake is furious. Because that is the reason Jasmine used for the sudden breakup. Jake crashed on his bed. His room is a mess and now he knocks over his table lamp as well accidentally. He falls asleep and sees a dream. It is a good dream. He had gone on an adventure for a charity and now is very popular. All the gorgeous girls are drooling at him. He wins back Jasmine. Jake wakes up fresh and energetic. Cameron looks puzzled at this unexpected enthusiasm in his flatmate. Jake says he is up for the idea Cameron suggested yesterday which is to travel across Australia for a charity purpose. Cameron applauds Jake for the good decision and high-fives him. There is one problem, Jake is afraid of riding a bike after an accident he had in the past. Cameron suggests kayaking or running. Jake wants something safer and doable. They finally settle for walking. They google the distance and it's a lot more than Jake can cover without fatal injuries. Traveling across Western Australia looks doable. But Cameron is going to test him. He times Jake walking 50 meters and turns out he takes 30 seconds to cover. The calculation says Jake can travel across Western Australia on foot in three months. Cameron says the charity raised will be for the ailing kids, and the bonus is the girls Jake is going to get on his way. But who is going to sponsor his hike? Cameron knows just the right person, or not that right. Cameron's uncle Brian King is a filthy rich media mogul. And he is a bit eccentric. He isn't very much liked by the public because of his immoral and insane doings. He flashed people at a party while drunk. He bugged celebrities' bathrooms for his media house. He is in no mood to retire despite his old age. He has only one loyal employee and that is Angel, his personal assistant who takes care of his PR. Cameron takes Jake to Brian to request his sponsorship. Brian communicates through video call while relaxing in his floating pool lounge. Brian doesn't find mere trekking across the country as something exciting to earn his sponsorship. He talks about a blind girl who kite surfed over a long distance for charity. Brian sponsored her. Jake should add some adventure to his boring plan. Brian says he wants Jake to tweet good things about Brian since he has been trash-talked in the media. Jake gets his sponsorship and Jake gets good repute among the masses. But Jake needs to trek in nothing but a loincloth and with a backpack. Brian even comes up with a name for Jake, Naked Wanderer. Before Jake could protest at this absurd proposition, Brian hangs up. Jake is losing his mind. He can't walk in such hot weather for three months without any clothes on. Cameron asks him to see the bright side. Jake will get the money and also fangirls, especially now when he is going to walk naked. Cameron promises he will meet him at intervals with supplies in a car. 
Brian's news agency tweets about naked wanderer starting his journey for the noble cause. People are skeptical of such an arduous task. Some can't believe Brian can support a charity. Amid the social media gossiping about Jake, Cameron tries to boost Jake's morale while driving him to his starting point where news reporters have gathered already. Jake is in a bathrobe to hide his nude body one last time. Brian has provided him with a satellite phone and is going to track his location all the time. Brian wants him to keep tweeting about his activities along the journey and especially about the generosity of Brian King. The news reporters are streaming live with Brian who is now on a video call. He announces 200 grand for Naked Wanderer and speaks highly of himself. Now the camera shifts to Jake. Jasmine appears from somewhere and walks up to Jake. She throws her arms around him and poses for the cameras, then goes on to take off his bathrobe. Jake takes his backpack, satellite phone and a hat to start his journey. Jasmine blows a kiss his way. He is happy to see her there for him. Little does he realize, she isn't the keeper in any way. Angel has called Jake to repeat Brian's warning. Jake must accomplish his challenge. Jake walks in his loincloth, waving at the vehicles passing by and fighting the blazing sun with the parasol. A fast-moving truck flips his parasol upside down. He keeps on going. People from their vehicles hurl unkind comments at him and blare horns unnecessarily. Cameron has driven his jeep to check on Jake. He boosts his morale again and says he will meet him at the next decided point. Jake asks if he still has the map with meeting spots marked on it. Cameron drives away without giving a satisfying answer. He clearly isn't a responsible support. Jake watches himself on the news on his phone, especially Jasmine blowing kisses which did get filmed. He eats canned food and carries on his walk. He sings a song to himself. He doesn't look tired yet. In fact, he seems to be enjoying the walk so far. He is caught off guard by a sudden and loud greeting. Jake jumps startled and sees a brown man sitting by the roadside. The man calls himself Illy. He asks why Jake is naked. Jake explains. Illy says it is such a stupid thing to do. Illy is spending some time in the woods and is on his way to the country. They bid goodbye to each other. Jake has reached the seaside. It looks like Banbury. He takes off his backpack and the loincloth to jump into the water. Well, his loincloth has naked wanderer printed on it. He is enjoying the refreshing sea until a jellyfish bites him. He whimpers in pain and hurriedly gets out of the water. He pees on the bitten skin to heal. The tribulations have started now. A passing by car slows down. Three English people in it are interested to know what he is up to with no clothes. Jake explains and introduces himself. They are Keith, Nikki, and Valerie. They think it is the most insane thing they have come across. Jake's asks where they are heading. They are going to stay for a bit in Cervantes. Jake is meant to reach there two and three days. Valerie gives him a banana and they drive away. He has reached the town and looks around to find Valerie and her friend's car. A middle-aged woman comes out of her store and embraces him vivaciously. She looks too enthusiastic to handle. She says she has been waiting for him. He has been on the news and his itinerary is public. She helps him take off his backpack and goes to get something for him to eat. Jake gets dressed quickly. He expects to see Valerie around. The woman, who calls herself Helena, is back with a food tray. She doesn't look pleased with naked wanderer clothes now. She shoves a cookie in his mouth and slips a lot of cash in his pocket for charity. She is all over him, telling him how much she admires him. She starts giving a forced massage to Jake who is clearly very uncomfortable. He manages to excuse himself and get away. He finds Valerie sunbathing on the beach. He walks to her, stops after a few steps, turns around, thinks for a moment and then keeps walking to her. She looks at him and greets him cheerfully. He is nervous and awkward in his interaction. He asks if she is up for a swim. Valerie says she would rather enjoy the sun for now. Jake sits beside her. He offers to help her in rubbing sunscreen on her back. Valerie asks about his charity. He tells her. She is impressed. Her little niece is sick like the kids Jake is raising donations for. Both are making jokes and laughing when Nikki and Keith come walking to them. Keith and Nikki are a couple. They are glad to see Jake again. Four of them jump into the sea and have fun together. They are camping in Cervantes for a night, sitting by the fire, drinking and roasting sausages. On being asked, Jake tells them about getting fired from his job and being single. Keith is a funny and straightforward guy. He says Valerie is also single. She came on the trip right after getting dumped. Nikki chides Keith for talking when not needed. They share laughs and get drunk. Three of them have set up pods to sleep in while Jake sleeps under the sky. Valerie comes to lie by his side, caresses his face and whispers to him that she is happy she met him. She realizes he is asleep already. She kisses his cheek and goes to her pod to sleep. He wakes up the next morning, takes off everything except his loincloth and is set to resume his walk. Valerie comes to say goodbye. She gives him a tiny piggy bank as a good luck charm. Jake takes a selfie with her to tweet. Jake is running out of food. He tries reaching out to Cameron but he isn't responding. Jake has stopped to catch his breath when Brian video calls him. His ex-personal assistant talked badly of him in an interview. Brian needs praising tweets from Jake now more than ever. Jake promises he will do it as soon as he gets network signals. Brian has ordered a lot of Indian dishes to eat and that is exactly when starved Jake is on a video call. Jake's mouth waters and before he could ask for a food supply, Brian hangs up. 
Jake is napping in the woods when Elise startles him again with a greeting. He has come trekking there. Jake says he hasn't eaten much lately. Illy offers to roast a rat for both of them. Jake has no option but to eat a rat. Jake is now walking near the main road. He sees a car pull over. It is Cameron. Where is his Jeep? Jake outbursts at him for not supplying food to him on time. Cameron says he has lost his Jeep which had food supplies and a map in it. Jake is helpless. Cameron doesn't even have water with him. He has a milk carton that he clumsily hands over to Jake. It falls down, slipping the little milk it had in it. Jake is sure that Cameron deliberately let the carton fall. Jake runs after him, frustrated, while he drives away without any genuine promise about provisions. Jake has to relieve himself. The rat has disturbed his stomach. He isn't finished yet when a python crawls near to him. Jake sees it and before he could escape safely, the python bites his hand. He falls down unconscious. He opens his eyes in a cave by a fire. Billy happened to pass by him and dragged him inside the cave. He is running a fever now and his head aches. Jake is thankful to Illy, although his head hurts because of the wild dragging over the rocks. Illy wonders why Jake would be so hard on himself by signing up for this walk. Jake says he is doing it for his ex-girlfriend. Ali finds it crazy, but he does believe that a journey like this can bring positive and massive changes in Jake's life. Jake feels better the next morning and resumes his walking. Tweets about Brian are circulating and they are not good as usual. There are tweets in admiration of Jake and they are from the girls. Well, Jasmine has also posted her own photo with the caption that she misses her boyfriend. She does enjoy the attention. Jake has now reached a town on the way. Townspeople are there to receive him with applause and banners. A little girl in a wheelchair hugs Jake and thanks him for what he is doing for kids like her. Her mother gives him donations in cash. A news reporter there asks him how he is doing and if he has any comment on Brian King. Brian is, again, in the news for his usual misdeeds. Jake stays silent on that one. He goes on to meet Valerie and her friends who are staying there for a night. Jake will get a room here too. Cameron has arrived. Jake ignores him and says he hasn't been very much helpful as a support team. Cameron purchases loads of goodies for Jake and keeps apologizing. But Jake is still mad at him. Jake is savoring a burger while Keith gives him company. Keith asks what he intends to achieve by this difficult journey. Jake tells him about Jasmine. He wants to prove that he is a fun adventurous guy. Keith asks where Valerie is in this picture. Jake wonders if she ever thinks of him. Keith says she does fancy Jake and keeps talking about him. Jake looks pleased learning that. Valerie, Nikki and Cameron join them at the table. Cameron tries to talk with Jake. Jake brushes him off again. Valerie says he should be forgiven by now since he is very sorry. Jake complies and is cool with Cameron now. Jake is going to avoid drinking and just sleep to continue afresh the next day. Valerie walks him to the room. She gives him a relaxing massage. Jake wonders what made her come and drive across Australia. She says her boyfriend ended things with her so she needed a break to feel better. She was occupied with helping her sister and taking care of her sick niece. She couldn't spend much time with her boyfriend. That offended him and he dumped her. Jake says the loss is his. Valerie doesn't care anymore. She tells Jake about every other girl going crazy about Naked Wanderer. He is famous now. Jake and Valerie spend a night together, making love to each other. The next morning, Jake says goodbye to Valerie with the promise that he will see her at Karatha. She says she will stay in Australia to spend some more time with him when he is done with his walk. Brian King is lying on his king-sized sofa, going through tweets. Everyone is bashing him. Jake isn't posting much in his glory. Brian isn't happy. He needs to rectify the situation. He is going to send Angel to talk some sense into Naked Wanderer. Jake is passing by the seaside. A dune buggy races towards him and stops. It is Angel. She knows what a sentimental person Jake is, so she intends to manipulate him into tweeting good things about her boss. Angel sheds tears, saying how much of a kind man Brian is. He is misunderstood all the time. It breaks his heart. Jake pats her shoulder and says he knows she loves Brian. Angel is about to correct him but resorts to not denying it. If that is what it takes, so why not? She admits she loves Brian and can't see him suffering. Jake, who had his heart broken and who knows how crazy people can get in love, like going on a walk naked, consoles her and promises that he will tweet about Brian. Angel has done her job very well. Jake walks among palm trees, under the sun and by the blue seas. He does push-ups while waiting for the rail tracks to get cleared. Valerie tweets that she is waiting for him. He finally reaches Karatha. A cheerful crowd is there to receive him. So is Valerie and her friends. Well, Cameron has brought Jasmine there too. A bad surprise it is. He does like drama and conflict for fun. Jasmine is jealous to see Valerie and Jake kissing each other. She goes to pull him away and put her arms around him. Jake gets awkward. He introduces Jasmine as his friend. Jasmine says she is more than that. Valerie looks upset. Jake is furious at Cameron for bringing Jasmine there. Cameron lies that she was the one who forced him to bring her to meet Jake. To Jake's displeasure, the caravan park they are staying in at Karatha also belongs to Helena, and she is here with all of her creepy enthusiasm. She comes running to him, hugs him and massages him. She is throwing a karaoke party for him where she asks him to sing. The whole town is gathered there. He takes the mic and dedicates it to Valerie. He sings Amy Winehouse's Valerie. Everyone starts rocking to the song. Valerie smiles and dances along with Jake. 
They kiss while everyone claps. Jasmine looks bitter. Jasmine tells Jake that she wants to marry him now. Jake says she isn't her type and he has realized that now. They shouldn't be together. He asks her to give back his ring which she still has. She angrily gives it back and flounces off. Valerie has seen Jake talking to her. She misunderstands and decides to leave for good. Jake sees Valerie and her friends leaving in their car without saying goodbye. He shouts from behind to stop them but they drive away. He is confused about what might have happened. He wants to drive with Cameron after Valerie. Cameron knows Uncle Brian will ruin his life by falling back on the plan. He asks Jake to keep walking and gives him the map Keith had given to him. All the places they are going to go are marked on it. Jake resumes his walk in the hope to reach Broom in time and find Valerie on the way. He had started his journey with an intention of winning back Jasmine. But now he wants to walk for sick kids and his love. We see Valerie downhearted and angry on the rest of her road trip. Jake keeps tweeting to her to know what offended her. Jake crosses paths with Ali again. Jake is tired of constant calls from Brian. He asks Ali to keep his satellite phone. Jake is taking a different route to the finish line according to Valerie's map. He might find her on the way. There are no more tweets from him. People on social media are curious about Naked Wanderer. So is Brian. Jake's satellite phone isn't with him anymore. Brian gives a call to Jake and threatens to end his life if Jake doesn't respond soon. Brian is still in Karatha and doesn't seem to care much about his weird uncle. He goes back to bed where we see him fooling around with Jasmine. A surprise it is. Jake is now crossing a desert. He is parched and having a hard time. He sees Angel coming in his direction on a camel, with three camels carrying her provisions. Jake wonders how she tracked him without a phone with him. She is here to deliver Brian's message. Some big newspaper wants to do a cover story on Naked Wanderer in 10 days. Jake is supposed to finish his three weeks walk in 10 days. Jake protests but agrees when Brian offers to double his charity amount. As soon as Angel leaves, Jake sees Ali coming behind him. So it was because of Ali's phone that Angel was able to track Jake. Jake shows Valerie's map to Ali who says he can help him get there in lesser days. They cross the desert and walk through rocky hills. Ali hears wild dogs nearby. He and Jake start running as fast as they can. Jake trips over and falls off a hill. Angel is at a point to receive Jake and so is the press. Cameron is there too. But Naked Wanderer isn't here yet. And then they see Ali come running carrying a badly injured Jake. Cameron calls an ambulance and takes Jake for medical assistance. Ali and Angel go along. We see Valerie looking at the ambulance drive away. She looks concerned. Many weeks later, Valerie and her friends give a lift to Ali in their car. They still are on a road trip. Three months later, Jake has finished his walk and has raised 500 grand. He is going to be on a live TV show. People clap and cheer for him. The interviewer asks how he raised this hefty donation. Jake gives credit to Brian and the local people he met on the way. Brian is sitting in the control room and belching in Jake's earpiece. Brian wants all the credit in his name. On being asked why Jake started this walk, he is honest in stating the truth. He did it to have his ex-girlfriend back. Brian is outrageous up in the control room and asks Jake to say that it was because of Brian King that he thought of this walk. Jake ignores him and goes on to talk about Valerie, a true love he found on the way. He is sad as she left with no explanation. The audience feels his sadness and sympathizes. As he spoke sweetly of Valerie, we see Valerie rise from her seat. She has been there in the audience all this time. Jake walks down the set to stand in front of her. The cameras shift on two of them. Valerie overheard Cameron at Karatha talking about Jake's plan to get attention from girls during his journey. She thought she was just one of those girls. That is why she left. She regrets doing so. She apologizes and tells Jake she loves him. Jake confesses his love for her and they kiss amid cheers and applause. In the control room, Brian King is highly disappointed. Angel pecks him on the cheek. Out of sympathy, for sure. Brian looks at her and asks if she would marry him. She says no sternly. She is just one loyal assistant. 